Australia, 33 points to 30 winners over France. And with that, the series, two games to one. I mean, honestly, man, it's been a cracking, cracking series. It had a, a wee bit of its detractors, you know, the French not sending some of their big guns, but two very young sides. And I've, I've mentioned it multiple times, who will benefit infinitely from this series, tight as it was, pressure, moments, uh, going forward to the next Rugby World Cup. Uh, yeah, I think this this series has done both sides a lot of good. There were only three points difference in the end, 33-30 for the game and for the series. So, yep, France take it. Not France. Wallabies take it. It was that close. Um, but, yeah, I'll go through some of the key events of the game. Some of the stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts. Not without its controversy, this game. Uh, if you have observed the whiteboard, you will see there is a name in red, which means red card. That was Marika Corambetti. Uh, who got red card early, but he wasn't the first Wallaby to go off. That was Filippo Dalgunu who went off after about one minute when he knocked his wrist into Jamine's, I think, waist. He had to go off injured, so Reese Hodge came on very early in this game. France took the early lead through a penalty. Uh, it was Jamine that got a penalty inside the Aussies 22, three points to nil, kind of sticking to the script this series, which has been France taking the points when they are on offer. Uh, but then a minute later, five minutes on the clock, Marika Korobedi gets red carded for a high tackle on the number eight and captain of France, Gelon. Um, and it's a tough one, man. It's going to cause infinite level of um criticism i would imagine because honestly uh i'm not a huge fan of talking about refereeing decisions all the time but this one you can't really avoid it it's it's penalized for a, a high tackle he hits gelon pretty hard um i thought firstly gelon was kind of dipping because he was catching a ball as he was about to get tackled and he visibly dipped i thought not a referee, have not studied the laws of the game. Um, yeah, but just seemingly from a layman's point of view, a rugby fan's point of view, seemed like he was dipping a bit. I don't think Marika was particularly high on him. Uh, I thought the initial contact was shoulder. I thought it was a yellow, personally. But, um, yeah, he gets red. And it's made worse by the fact that Gelon kind of theatrically grabbed his face and fell to the ground, which is not something you want to see in the game of rugby union. But either way, uh, it's a depressing moment where it's 14 on 15 for the majority of the game, 75 minutes, and you're thinking, man, that's going to be it. But interestingly, it's not. Um, seven minutes, France, maul it, it goes well. Um, and they get the next try of the match. The first try of the match, it's Kuyu. He gets a try in eight minutes. He just flattens over Tate McDermott, and it's not made any better for the, the, the Queensland crowd, which was really good at that time. Uh, I mean, in that game, it was a really good crowd. They're baying for blood because it looks like Kuyu's kind of led with the forearm as he goes over Tate McDermott, but he scores a try, and it's 10 points to nil to France. They've got an extra man, and it's looking like it's going to be, as I mentioned, a pretty long day at the office. Um, but man, Michael Hooper kind of picks the team up by the scruff of the neck. 10 minutes, he gets a big old line break. Uh, he's put into space by Lola Seal, to be fair, who has a pretty good game. Uh, remember, there's no um, James O'Connor for this one because he's still not 100% fit. Uh, he offloads it. That's Hooper to McDermott, who goes over for a try on uh, 11 minutes. So it's a pretty good hit back from the Wallabies and probably quite needed. Uh, Seven points to ten with the French in front. Uh, Jemine kicks another one, though. Payangamosa concedes one of the breakdowns, so it's 13-7. Um, Gelon, who had gone off for an HIA, passes his HIA and comes back on. Funnily enough, um, some would say he didn't get hit in the head, so of course he passes HIA. Uh, Lolasio looks to have scored uh, an intercept try, and he has. Uh, on 20 minutes, my notes are very unclear here. Uh, yeah, intercept try after a, um, a Wallaby's kind of own mucked up line out. The French end up getting the ball, but then when they spin it wide, uh, Lolasio makes up for the previous uh, Wallaby's error. 
And uh, yeah, he goes over for a try. So it's 14 points to 13. The celebrations from him, uh, he, he was pretty chuffed to be getting an intercept try because he's, he's putting his arm up to celebrate the try. Then looks over his shoulder. Oh, bugger, there's a Frenchman running me down. So he kind of knuckles down and goes over for the try. But yeah, man, the Wallabies are absolutely pumped at that point. And the crowd's really getting into it. They get a penalty on 25 minutes. Uh, that one was um, Gelon with a high tackle. And the crowd didn't like that one either. The crowd was really uh, not his biggest fan, let's put it that way. 17-13, uh, they won a penalty at the scrum to the Wallaby. So they were actually looking maybe better than they have at any point during this series. More dominant for that kind of, I don't know, 10-minute period. France did get a line break on 35 minutes. Uh, Kuyu, man, he probably could have passed it to that captain again, Gelon, to go over for a try. But for some reason, he took the tackle. I think it was McDermott with a bit of scramble defense. They brought him down. Um, but they did go back for an advantage. And then uh, Wokey gets a pretty wonderful try. Not the best try of this game by any means on uh, on 36 minutes. That one's Falatea going close. He taps it from five meters out. And from the next phase over... Woki kind of shows those go-go gadget arms to dot over for the um, for the try. He just dives over the ruck. So, yeah, it's 20, uh, 20 points to to 17. It's a three-point gap. Teddy Toma does look to have scored another one. Uh, but there's an intercept in the build-up to that. Uh, no, a knock-on in the build-up to that one. Um, I did think the TMO calls were a bit slow. Uh, when the TMO was used for the red card and for the Tomar one, a bit slow. I mean, you've got to get a balance of getting it right and getting it uh, done in a timely manner, of course. But I did think uh, you didn't need to look at that knock-on that many times to know that it was a knock-on. Um, there is a penalty close to the line after the Wallabies had had a good attacking play right before halftime. So into the sheds, it's 20 points apiece. Nothing can separate these teams, man, seemingly. Um, interestingly, it's position 61-39 to the Wallabies. Territory 64-36 to the Wallabies. So despite the fact that they were the man down, they wouldn't, you, you wouldn't see it from the stats. But the way this kind of three-game series has gone is that the Wallabies like to play with the ball and the French like to give them the ball to play with. So I feel like the... The French might have been affected by a man down, maybe more so than the Wallabies, because the Wallabies guys are happy to play with the pill. So you don't really notice the, you know, the the, the man lacking on the field so much when you got ball in hand as as when you're on defense. You know, there's less space out wide maybe when you're on defense, but with attack, they were still able to make things work. Um, they did have four knock-ons to one though, which was a bit of a troubling one, and eight turnovers conceded to two. So the error rate for the Wallabies is still a bit high. Dave Rennie won't be happy with that. The French were tackling at 97%. So they're having to, to make the Wallabies work for it. I mean, the Wallabies were 86, which is good numbers. But, yeah. Uh, second half, the French miss a drop goal from like 40 meters out pretty early. It's a weird statement of intent, that one. Um, but then 47 minutes, Barassi gets like one of the tries of the game. There's two tries that I think are the, the, the two top tries in this game. For totally different reasons. Like, uh, this is the thing, a beauty one. It's uh, it's a scrum in their own 22. They go blindside. Teddy Tomar, who's already a bit of a live wire chips, regathers, passes it to Kuyu, who gets it to Barasi, and he goes over for the try at 27 points to 20. Like, it's a length of the field. It's a coast-to-coast. -coast. It's an unexpected one. Maybe that's one where you do feel the, the lack of that extra defender. That try maybe exposes that one, but either way, man, it's a hell of a try. But I do think Tupo's one is, is almost as good. He's come on. He makes a huge impact as Taniela Tupo, man, at scrum time, but also in his try because the Wallabies are knocking on the door for ages for the French line. I think it's Maul, it's scrum, it's scrum, it's advantage, it's tap and go, nice Arani. They're going through phases after phases. Bell goes close. The Wallabies are just hammering away, but the French just keep holding and keep holding. Tupo, when he finally busts his way over, uh, I think he goes through Woki, Telfafanua, and Bamba. None of these guys are small dudes, but somehow Tupo finds a way to burrow his way to the line. It's a heck of a try, man. 
27 points apiece. Like two absolute wonder tries to go through three guys from a meter out. Tupo is a powerful, powerful unit. More so than maybe even I gave him credit for. And I know he's powerful. Um, interestingly, both sides missed penalties. The Wallabies second, uh, but Jaminet was first 54 minutes. He missed a kickable one after Bumble had won a penalty at the breakdown. And Lolasio missed a very kickable one on 58. So that one was pretty much in front, unlike him. Um, 63 minutes though, Australia had a maul. They got a penalty. They had a scrum, a penalty, and um, they... Went into France's 22, got a free kick at the scrum. They tapped it. They went through some phases. Brendan, Brendan Paying Amosa looked to have gone over, but the TMO, Eagle Eye TMO, spotted a um, a knock on in the build up. It looked like it might have been a strip from a French hand, but either way, that try is chalked off. So both these sides have had tries chalked off in this game. Uh, 72 minutes, Australia kick a penalty to make it 30 points to 27. It's a long range one. Lolosio doesn't make a mistake from that one. 74 minutes, Jamine gets one in return. It's a high tackle. And I, as I was watching that game, I literally said, as the Wallabies were doing the restart, don't give away a penalty on the restart. And they did it a few phases later. It's, it's something, I don't know, about the Wallabies. I feel like, I mean, a lot of teams can do it, but I feel like the Wallabies are especially guilty of conceding penalties immediately after they've scored. That was troubling. But they did manage to get one last penalty after the French knocked it on. Uh, they got a scrum, and their scrum won a penalty. Their scrum was honestly dominant once Tupo came on, and Bell, to be fair. It's not just Tupo, but anyway... Um, and they slotted that one. Not an easy kick for a lot of sets. One he should be getting, but it's an especially uh, mentally, you know, pressurized kick, and he nails it. So 33 points to 30. With like a minute and a bit to go, the Wallabies opt to run the clock down, but sure enough, they can see the breakdown penalty pretty smartly, man, like a few phases into it. So they they kind of failed to, to run out the game then, so to close it down. But France don't opt for a very difficult penalty around about halfway and to the side. They um, they kick for touch, they maul it. And where the Wallabies do excel here is with their maul defense. It's phenomenal. And they get a turnover, so that's pretty much game over there. So you won't get many more moments like that where you can put your kicker in a situation where he has to kick a penalty to win a game or to even up the game. You know, with five minutes to go. That's kind of experience in the bank at this level, which you can't, you know, you can't just distribute anytime you want. You can only get that through the real deal. So that's why I'm saying both these sides, I think, will be absolutely wrapped and uh, benefit from, from the way this series played out. Um, yeah, the Wallabies to win with a man down for that much of the game is, is a huge Herculean effort, man. So congratulations to them. For the French to put in an effort like this without most of their best players is also a hell of an effort so it speaks to the depth in French rugby right now I think there's positives to look from from both sides maybe not so much the refing at times but um yeah very very happy days run meters finished 246 to 281 but the French had less ball uh 36 percent possession and 33 percent territory so the Wallaby is pretty dominant but as the series has kind of gone on not really able to the Wallabies dominate the, the stats, like, but aren't able to generate more from it. So it's, again, the French doing less with more. That's kind of their, their tact. Um, turnovers conceded 11-7 to 7 with the Wallabies having more. Um, penalties conceded 14-9 with the French conceding a few more. Scrum time, again, would have been responsible for a few of those. Uh, the Wallabies ended up tackling at 86%, which is pretty encouraging as well. Hooper was everywhere uh, at the breakdown as well. But the French are at 95%, man. It literally took Tupo barging over three guys to get that try. Um, Azago has 17 out of 18 tackles. That's a good effort from the big Frenchman. And uh, Bailo the hooker has 14 from 15. Tate McDermott, three defenders beaten. Looked good in his starting effort, I thought. Um, and uh, Jamine has three defenders beaten. 72 run meters for his side as well. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. With um, with Swinton there as well, I thought he was he added a bit of value. Pretty disruptive for what the French were trying to get going forward, but yeah, man. Uh, ultimately, a really really fascinating series to watch, and um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty pleased I watched it. So yeah, I'm about to go to bed because it is after midnight. I am a bit knackered, but 
as I said, I'm kind of coming down off the high of the, the drama for that series. It was a heck of a series. Congratulations to the Wallabies. Um, they'll have a pretty stern test with the All Blacks shortly, but they will go into it pretty battle-hardened after a, uh, a tough French series. The All Blacks may be a bit underdone against the Fijians and Tongans. We will have to kind of wait and see how that plays out. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on this game and this series. And um, I will talk to you guys again soon. See you later.